uh, watch from Frederick Constant. A beautiful pen from Modi Grappa. A prize from Nomos. It's one of their sundial uh, uh, rings, uh, doodags. They're really nice and very collectible. And so, uh, three prizes, uh, and we're going to get going now. So, if this goes off topic, just let me know. So, <laughs> I saw the website, I was like, ooh, I want to do that. So, um, shtick that I'm going for, um, continuity of simple style, but a continuity run through, that runs throughout the style, which would be orange. Um, if you've seen the motor, the subtle but obnoxious motorcycle outside, that's mine. Um, but the story, here's the story I want to tell. So, and Steve doesn't know this, so... Um, sorry. It's clean, like, right? Yeah, yeah, it's clean, okay. it's clean, and ho hopefully inf interesting, especially to YouTube. Um, so, three years ago, I called, I was looking for Nomos, I was looking for the Metro, it's when they were moving to their in-house movements, and they were coming out with Metro, I said, I want one, can I get on a waiting list, here's a deposit, great. What Steve didn't know is I traveled to Germany a whole lot, and I was like, all right, maybe I can, like, jump in line. So, I was in Stuttgart for a long weekend, Rented a car, drove up to Glashut, did everything I could. Knocked on the door at Nomos, went down to their boutique, talked to the lady, wanted to know what she was doing after dinner, looked, tried on everything. She let me try on the Metro. I showed her how good it looked. They wouldn't let me buy it because I wasn't on the uh, on the on the roster. So you made your you made your uh, you made your sale anyway. Anyway, I love this place. It's fun to go. And um, orange is my continuity between bike, clothes, and simplicity. So, thanks. All right. I think I may be going for orange also. So I have my orange car out there, all this orange stuff. Actually, I was going to be much more sedate as I got ready for this. And as I was getting dressed up in orange, my wife says, you know, I have an orange box head downstairs. Uh, <laughs> that the odds. So that's what it was an impulse box head. Impulse, impulse box head. You got that, that just this morning. I'd just like to say I'm very excited to have met uh, Steve and the group here. I'm looking forward to coming here a lot. I'm into Grand Seiko's spring drives myself. And it's fantastic to have a, a great place nearby and such a great person as Steve. So, uh, honestly, thank you. Tell us about your watch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1972, Sandoz and Sons, uh, mystery dial. Oh, wow. And it's in the, uh, I have a catalog of um, Basel Worlds throughout the years, and this is shown at Basel World in 72. Thank you. My story, where shall we start? Uh, my first introduction to Little Treasury Jewelers was in September. My first visit, I should say. Uh, I was following the Vermont line. I discovered them online, looked for a Vermont dealership, and found Little Treasury. What a great event we had back in September. Another great event today. I want to thank Steve and Linda and Ethan everyone here associated with Little Treasury, our Breitling rep, uh, or excuse me, I was a Freudian slip. Our, uh, our Vermont rep, thank you, uh, for the hospitality. And one thing I have to say that I like about your organization, Steve, is when you sponsor these events, you have a tie-in for a good cause. Yay. Right. Bravo. 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 Last September it was the hurricane relief. Today we're doing a small, in a small way, we're doing something to save the bay. Uh, lifelong watch lover, wristwatch collector, uh, retired firefighter, uh, just appreciate history, a lover of history. Uh, sometimes I think well, in addition to the watches and the hot ride outside in the parking lot, I wish I had a time machine and I was Marty McFly. And I could go back in time to see 
and experience the earlier part and the mid part of the last century, the post-war years, uh, to pay tribute to the living heroes, whether they're still with us or not, um, the greatest generation. One thing that impressed me about Vermont was their history and tie into aviation and World War II. Uh, my cousin, Elmer Tacey from Baltimore, uh, passed away December 25th, 1944 in Italy on a B-24 that crashed into a mountainside. He was from a coal mining hollow in West Virginia, came to Baltimore to make a better life and entered the U.S. Army Air Force and was assigned to a B-24 as a radio operator. So he came from nothing and at age 20, 20, 21, he passed away. So it's those type of individuals and what attracted me to the Vermont line was its history and tie into World War II and aviation. So I'm just a lover of history. Uh, fine craftsmanship, uh, which all of these lines are that Steve carries. They're all masterpieces in their own way. Uh, I don't see that one's any better than the other, but that's the beauty of Little Treasury is you offer this variety here and selection. So I could go on and on. <laughs> the, watch, the watch, this is a Vermont diver's watch I purchased from Little Treasury back in September. I simply love it. It's very simplistic, uh, very easy to read for my old eyes. Uh, and trust me, with this early onset thing I have happening, it doesn't make it, uh, it makes it much easier. So um, very nice, well-made, very simplistic, but very straightforward, uh, gets the job done. It can go from everyday use, from work wear to evening wear if you'd like. And I try to uh, coordinate it with my ensemble here, from my feet on up, the blue suede shoes, the uh, selvage buckle back jeans, very 1950s uh, throwback retro, and uh, matched it with a little stylish fashion from Portugal and uh, <coughs> I hope it works. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Indiana. That's a Colorado Jackson, actually. Indiana Jones is trademark. So. so obviously, I'm an explorer, and uh, in my hunt for the treasure, uh, I had definitely escaped the Nazis and used my trusty whip to swing over a pit of vipers who were very pissed that I wouldn't be their next meal. But uh, I had plans, I had the key to unlock the treasure. The only thing was, booby traps being what they are, I could only unlock the treasure during a full moon. Hence, my Towson mission moon <laughs> with the moon phase. So I was able to unlock, and I know you're dying to see the treasure. You might know what it is. You might be able to find it. <laughs> Bear with me. Hey now. <laughs> The Crystal Skull of Vodka. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> David said he would sing for us. Yeah. <laughs> New York, New York. <laughs> Notice it was the last of the songs. So. <clears throat> well, uh, story. Um, uh, I, I, my uh, great-grandfather, now my great-great-grandfather was a great lover of watches, and of course in his day, uh, he was a corpsman in the Civil War, they were all pocket watches. And so I've got one of his uh, gold pocket watches with this, you know, gold elk carved into it, or elk carved into the gold. And uh, I never take it out of the safe deposit box, because, you know, if anything ever happened to it, I'd just be lost. So, um, my mom uh, knows that I like watches, and, and she first told me about uh, this, this place out here, and then my girlfriend, Nadine, uh, was shopping out here, so it was like, you know, I heard it from two different sources to come on out here. 
So I did, and uh, you know, if you love watches, how can you not love this shop? So uh, you know, it's a great place to do uh, gift shopping for yourself or for others, which Nadine and I do. And uh, I had always had a fondness for Longines because my grandmother uh, was very fond of them. And I remember in the 70s, uh, my folks were trying to buy uh, a new house and didn't have much money. And so my grandmother uh, offered to buy my mom uh, a watch and uh, my mom wanted a long jean. So I always wanted the long jeans. So we were in here and I saw this watch and just couldn't leave without it. So, um, you know, there it is. And it's the, it's the best of those that I have. So when they were having a, a timepiece competition, well, of course, I watched, I, I wore this. Mm -hmm. And uh, my ensemble of just, you know, matching the car. Um, and um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> there we are. Great. The first time I came into Little Treasury, it actually wasn't for myself, you know, I, I mean, I knew they sold watches, but, um, you know, I was a selfless guy, and, you know, the first purchase I ever wanted to make in here was actually an engagement ring for my wife, who's hiding in the back, Jade. <laughs> so, you know, afterwards, you know, that's kind of where the story with Little Treasury blossomed, and, um, you know, today I'm wearing a uh, Bremont, you know, um, it was something exclusively made for the Kingsman movie, the first one that came out, and uh, I'll touch upon that in a little bit, but um, I think I kind of wanted to tie it first off with the suit, and um, it might not mean much to most people in here, but um, at the very least it's going to mean something to one person, and that's my wife, because uh, a little over a month ago I actually got married in this suit. Uh, <laughs> so, um... <laughs> So hopefully I get brownie points tonight, um, but... Uh, <laughs> but no, the thing is, like, you know, when I had this suit custom made, um, I had an idea, you know, because, you know, a lot of people do tuxes, and I kind of wanted something that had a little versatility to it. And, you know, this was something where, you know, I could get a lot of use out of this suit, you know, it was elegant for the wedding, and, you know, I hope it's doing as good of a job today as it did um, on September, tw September 22nd when I just got married, so... Um, but, you know, that's kind of basically what I'm just trying to portray right now it's like you know no matter how artistic how unique how limited something is you want to be able to kind of appreciate it over and over again and you know when I walked into the store I was completely dumbfounded when they even said they had a Braemont Kingsman in rose gold right. um, but you know this is one of a hundred pieces in the world but it doesn't look you know overwhelming you know it's still comfortable on the wrist you know it's chronometer a 24 hour uh, GMT and you know, it's something that I can still appreciate every day, you know, just like this suit. Um, you know, it's something I can get a lot of use out of, and, you know, it's just has a nice elegance to it, and, um, you know, which kind of leads me into my next point, which is Braemont. You know, the, the story about Braemont itself, um, you know, I had the pleasure of Nick coming in here in person. You know, one of the founders of Braemont, and, you know, one of the touching stories he told was, like, um, you know, the story of how this watchmaking company came to light in the first place. And, you know, it started with his brother Giles and their father, you know, they were out in a World War II plane. And essentially, you know, he was about to take off on the runway himself. Um, and then he got the bad news that, you know, they had both crashed, um, uh, you know, the, their father didn't make it. And basically, you know, the brother, um, you know, he was in the hospital with like 40, uh, 30 fractured bones. But the story that they came out of that was, you know, you know, life is too short. And, you know, I'd like to think, you know, with every, dark, difficult event, there's some light that comes out of it. And, you know, they took that and kind of ran full steam, like with their passion of like mechanical devices and ultimately Braemont was born in, you know, the late 1990s. And, you know, that kind of takes me back to, you know, why I started with Jade because, you know, we had been kind of dating two years and I kind of, um, you know, when my had, father had passed in 2015, you know, I kind of took that very close to heart, you know, because life is too short. And, you know, she had kind of been there, you know, the darkest moments of my life. And, you know, life is too short. I couldn't really see myself waiting any longer to, you know, not propose to or get married to her. So, you know, that's kind of ties in, you know, the story of, you know, the suit, um, Braemont. And then finally, you know, just the, the idea of Kingsman itself, you know, You've, you've got a lot of cool British spy movies out there, but, you know, something that's a little unique to Kingsman, you know, besides the kind of humor they put to it is that, 
you know, ultimately deep down, you know, one of the most famous lines in the movie is manners maketh man. And, um, you know, that's kind of something, how I live my life, you know. Um, you know, I kind of uphold myself to kind of like that gentleman standard because, you know, for me to portray myself that way, you know, it's kind of gives my wife Jade, you know, something to boast about. So, um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, all those components, you know, between the story of how Greymouth came to life, you know, the watch itself, you know, the, uh, the idea of Kingsman, it just kind of every one of these components really speaks to me closely. So, um, you know, I don't have a car this year um, to compare myself with, but, you know, this is the story and um, it's just going to some, be something that resonates with me, um, you know, for the rest of my life. So, thanks guys. Um, first of all, I, ever since I became a client of this store, every time I come in, I always make sure that I wear something that I bought here. I, always, I think it's very disrespectful to come in, hey Tom, what are you wearing? Oh, I bought this at Lily and Quiston Beckstead or whatever, got a great deal. I just really think it's, you know, you need to make it, or I need to make an effort to wear something I bought here. And uh, having said that, I feel I feel kind of a little like a jerk in that I am not wearing something that I bought here. <laughs> so uh, I don't see Steve rushing me out the door, so I'll yeah. continue. Um, when I heard about this event, I know these things are always meant to be fun and enjoy among all of the clients and the staff also. And... Uh, I was recently in here picking up a watch that we had ordered back in May, one of the Seiko Corsage models. Great watch, by the way. And Chris and Ethan both were going, oh, what are you gonna do for the uh, watch wardrobing? And I'm like, me, wardrobe? You know, does that mean clothes coordination? You know, I don't really associate with that too well. And I uh, wasn't planning on doing anything. And uh, I'm walking through my, my house one day, and what do I see? I mean, how can you miss it? This hat is staring me straight in the face, the Daytona hat. And uh, I go into, a few days later, I'm in my bedroom, and I'm looking in the closet, and there is a stack of Daytona t-shirts. I used to work years ago with the American Motorcycle Association, and we did races at Daytona, so I was there twice a year for probably 20 years. And then the first day that it gets a little cool, I reach in the closet to grab a jacket and I grab that jacket, which is the American Motorcycle Institute, which is a motorcycle mechanics school in Daytona. And it says it on there. So I'm thinking that must mean I'm supposed to wear everything Daytona to this event. And uh, so that's pretty much what I did. As you can see from the hat, the t-shirt, and this t-shirt I found at the, uh, I found in a stack at the bottom of the stack and judging from the amount of wrinkles that it had when I unfolded it, it's a dated 1991, but it's obviously the first time I've ever worn it. So uh, again, I, I apologize to Steve and the staff for not wearing uh, something that you sell here, but in the spirit of the event, I do have my Braymont Alt 1P2, Alt 1P2, in the car that I will gladly put on as soon as this is over. I was so, going to suggest anyway you could leave a, a watch with you. So. <laughs> I've done that many times, as a matter of fact. So, uh, is that a good Yes, it is. It's, I, I'm sorry? Did it pull a new one <laughs> I was only like 18 million short of getting the Paul Newman Daytona, and it's really, if I had 18 million dollars, it would not be in that watch. But uh, but anyhow, in the spirit of the event, I did wear a off-brand to uh, to the store, and uh, it's just fun to participate. I noticed a lot of people have, have just talked about what great. Uh, relationships and great uh, times they had here with the store and I certainly want to echo that every time I come in here I've you know, never felt under pressure to buy any. I've always felt like I'm not just a customer or a, or a potential buyer that you do become 
part of the family. I always hate that, oh, it's like a family, because we always have a couple cousins that we don't really care about. <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, so in the spirit of the event, I did wear an off-brand and so on and so forth, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. But again, thanks to everybody. And, and also, I always thank Steve. He's invited me to some very nice uh, events, and uh, I just always enjoy it. I just wish I lived closer. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thanks again for the opportunity to be here. So a couple months ago, I was looking for a Grand Seiko. And I work in New York, live in Maryland, so I'm in New York pretty much every week. Um, the store that I used to buy my watches from is a block away from me. Um, but something said, search in Maryland, let's see what you can find. And I, and I was looking around, I came across, actually it was um, a presage, which was a 60 limited, one of the limited amounts, I think. If I, if I remember correctly, our winner from last year may have picked up that presage. Is that true? I think you did pick it up. We had that conversation. Um, so we went on to really talk, and I mentioned to Steve that I wanted to come pass by because I'm a leather craftsman also, so I, I like watches I make stuff all by hand. And we got talking about the Grand Seiko. So as someone who grew up um, with a furniture shop in the backyard, I was accustomed to seeing people come in have a discussion, create things by hand. Now, multiple years later, I found myself being a craftsman where I actually make all my stuff by hand. So this bag is cut, stitched, no sewing machines, all done by hand. And when I think about the craftsmanship that goes into Grand Seiko, and just everything that is a part of the brand, it's something that totally resonated with me. Now, in terms of the attire, um, I couldn't help myself but to keep it a totally Japanese theme. So this is all by Shimala out of Japan. Um, so uh, artists out of New York designs it but use great artisans out of Japan to make it. So everything here is Shimala except for, of course, my alligator bracelet that matches the, the watch strap and the belt with the alligator on it also. But again, thanks for the opportunity. Um, like everyone else mentioned, it's really like a family here, and I'm happy to participate. Thank you. Hi, I'm a private pilot, and I met Linda and Steve a couple of years ago. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't tell, could you? Um, and they've fed my addiction for watches. I think every time we come here, we leave with something. I'm showcasing today the Vermont Wright Flyer, my wife uh, bought this for me for my 60th birthday uh, last year, and Linda and Steve came up for the party to present it. Okay, I'm sorry. No. Uh, what else can I say? I'm, I'm a private pilot. I love airplanes. I have a collection of aviation watches, which Steve gladly finds new ones for me to buy. Um, my father and grandfather were both naval aviators. Um, that's, I guess, where I got it in my blood. I love airplanes. And I don't think I really have to describe my attire anymore, so I'm short and sweet. Good. I know most of the folks in the room here today, so, um, but um, um, I, I'm, I'm representing some, someone who has gone through many changes in life, but one thing hasn't changed and it's my love of watches, especially as an adult. Uh, watches for me represent uh, what I'm about, form, form over function, or form follows function, if you will. And whenever I look at a fine timepiece, it calms me. And I'm not sure how, to, how I can explain that. Um, as a kid, I definitely always enjoyed small mechanical things, but I also enjoyed poetry, and I also enjoyed fine art and watches for me represent that. I'm also someone who's pretty casual, and I'm someone who's pretty athletic, and I'm someone who, 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 who likes to use both my body and mind. So for me, a good sports watch means a lot. So I am wearing Bremont today, and I'm wearing what to me is, is Bremont's perhaps finest timepiece they've made in years, 
and that's their, uh, oh, come on in, folks, come on in. We're talking about our love of watches, right? So come on in. <laughs> and so, and um, Bramon, Bramon for me represents uh, a lot, and I didn't expect to come today to talk about Bramon, but I've been with Bramon from the very beginning, beginning when it came into the United States over 10 years ago. And, and at the same time, I've been with, with Steve and Linda in Little Treasury for quite a while, way before they had this store, when they were just right over there, before they had a lot of these brands that you see today. So there's a consistency and there is a loyalty and there's a commitment to something that you love and to people that, that you feel strong about. And that watches represent that to me very much. So other than that, or along with that, so this is the Bramont Regatta. And I do want to talk about this. Bremont is a brand that, that, that's very popular, but it's also a brand that a lot of people are like, where the hell did they come from? How did they do this? And this particular watch represents what's special about the brand. Uh, this is the very best regatta timer that I believe you can find in the market, even compared to Rolex. All right, now, now this is kind of an arcane thing I'm talking about. We're talking about yacht racing. I do not, I'm not a regatta person, but there's something about this watch and the way it's designed that, that kind of blows me away. And I'm pr I proudly wear this quite a lot. And I have this one and I also have the black one. There's two of them, it's a limited edition watch. And so what, I'm, what am I wearing today? So you see, I've got this on a very unique gray strap. And this is a vintage strap from a famous Italian watch company called Anonimo. Before, well, Anonimo is cool for those of you who know about that. And I'm just dressed like myself, very casual. I've got on gray, gray uh, you know, just kind of nicer trainers. These are Porsche design trainers. So uh, I do love German things. And how is it that a British watch brand can fit so well with quality German products and quality German art? And to this day right now, where I'm up to right now, was I love Grand Seiko. And that's, that's something else I should talk about. Some of you know that I actually wrote a piece about Grand Seiko recently based on the trip that I just took to Japan. This is on the Little Treasury website. And these fine watches all seem to, to fit in for me as a person. And I can talk a lot more about that. But the one thing I do want to mention though, and it is watch related, and it's my wife right there. So she is wearing, so we got here the last minute, but check her out because she's got on a watch also purchased here. Meister Singer, German brand, green dial, check out the lipstick, and look at the shoes, look at the shoes. So, I, you know, so she's got to have a few points thrown in there. And our daughter is there, and get this, you guys, my daughter's name is Nava. She is wearing a watch from a brand called Nava. <laughs> All right, and, um, it's, and, and, and Nava is, a, is an old Hebrew term that means the most beautiful, and she's actually wearing a watch with that, so she tried her best to match up some stuff today. Wow. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and um, that's it, you guys. I'm happy to be here. And, um, um, and last year, I, this contest brought out a lot of wonderful feelings from people, and I'm glad to see that even more this year, so thank you all. I did not expect to walk in the door and have to hold the microphone 20 minutes later. Um, I bought two watches with my wife last month here, so of course thank you, Steve and Linda. A ball watch and a Nomos. My wife's second Nomos, my first ball watch. I'm fascinated by this technology, the tritium technology. I've collected watches for a long time. I do a lot of estate sale watch purchases. Um, one of the most unique stories was the um, purchase in Zurich in Switzerland. We walked in, and this is something if you ever want to buy a watch in Europe, the value added tax is only added once when you purchase something in Europe. So I'm looking at this, I think it was a Maurice Lacroix with all the features. And by the time you do the calculation and figure out it's about eight, 9,000 bucks as the estate sale watch, you're going, wow, value added tax, 19%, you do the math. And then you find out that they don't charge tax a second time on anything that's used in Europe. So if you ever want to buy something over there used, it's going to be a good deal. Um, 
last weekend or the weekend before was the watch show in New York. If you guys ever can go up to that, that was pretty awesome. We went up there. I wore my um, James Bond, my 007 Omega watch because they were giving a speech on that. That was pretty cool. Um, I'm a retired dentist. I used to practice here in Maryland, so I like my detail very, very much. And so watches have always been a big interest of mine. I've always collected pocket watches. And then Ball uh, Company started off, obviously, as a pocket watch concept. And the accuracy then evolved into, obviously, their, their chronotype watches because of the big accent, historically, that uh, was part of the, the brand's reputation for becoming famous. And that's what turned me on to buying that watch last month. And I'm done talking. Thank you very much again. <laughs>
I don't even know where I got this, but this is inimitable. And you pull out your little card holder that's got this wonderful image from this Superhand movie in the 1930s. Now you're legit. And then if you ever get pulled over at the airport because you got a bad attitude, maybe that happened to me once, and you reach for your, your uh, license and this is your wallet, this, not only does this impress kids because, you know, they see you reaching your wallet to pull out your card, but you reach in your wallet for whatever reason. Uh, security guards love this because what security guards don't like this? So then ultimately, you have to be able to do the thing. So one of the things you do, you know, I sit in a chair and I talk, and so my socks are visible. So my wife has made, my wife has made sure that I have nothing but an endless supply of ridiculous socks that make people laugh. And so these are my bam, wang, pow socks. And so if you had seen me in 1992, you might notice that my 48 regular jackets fit a little different than they did. But I can tell you that this 1992 image shirt also fit me differently, but it's still got the identity that you want. I, I wore this um, outdoors today. And my wife said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I said, uh, uh, wear my t-shirt, hon. And then my daughter, who's nine, uh, without mom listening, said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> uh, just learn from her mom. So thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. This is my second time here. I was here last weekend. So, so this is my second time, and thank you so much, and I feel belong already, so I think that's a very important thing. So first thing first, right, what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a, grand, uh, a Seiko, right? It's a Seiko uh, high uh GMT that I just acquired this morning, and it just happened to be a Grand Seiko. Um, I always like Seiko for some reason, because I... Uh, when my father passed away, he was wearing Seiko, and that, that, that's what I, the one that I, I've been keeping as well. And uh, I was introduced uh, to uh, watch collection actually by my wife when she gave me uh, her father's uh, a vintage uh, 1964. Uh, it was an Omega uh, Seamaster. So that, that started me from a, a collection perspective. Um, so so that, that, that's my watch. I really like it. Um, so the second thing, right, so it's my car, and that's, that's, I'm not here for, the, for what I'm wearing, it's that for my car. So when, when I first came here this morning, I knew I was going to get a Grand State car. So uh, I, I drove my uh, BMW 7 Series, and the reason I'm driving that is because I think there's a lot of uh, similarity between, it, between the two items. So it's a, it's a lot of history, uh, quality and also elegant too, and it's not too, because I have a black car, so it's not as freshy. So I think that's why I, I feel about Grand Seiko is because of the quality and all the, all the things that you, know, the, you would appreciate you know, as an owner. So I really appreciate that, you know, Gary, it's Gary. Yes. And, and Steve, you know, introduced me to the brand, and I really enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.